distance combination. A combine dengan B. Okay. Dia akan jadi C. What is C? Newly formed company. Ini adalah syarat untuk amalgamation. In amalgamation, okay, the existing company which is A and B will be dissolved. Winding up, dibubarkan. End up, dia akan creating a new company which we call C. Ini totally new company. Itu adalah business combination classified under amalgamation. Okay, what about absorption? Absorption, we have A, we have B. Okay, we're talking about absorption, meaning at the end, the only one company to become a dominant company. Okay, dominant company. Mangsa dan pemangsa. Okay, dominant company. So if I say that A absorb B, meaning to say that the, the company that will be survived at the end will be A. Dominant. Because A absorb B. So what happened to B? B will be dissolved. Winding up. Dibubarkan. Okay. Nampak? Maknanya A dengan B tinggal A. Okay. Uh, so boleh cari dekat Malaysia what kind of merger. Okay. That classified under absorption. Okay. Let's look at the last type. Which is take over. Uh, yang ni saya ambil contoh kazanah dengan mas. Kalau you refer to the newspaper cutting, dia akan sebut take over. Kazana, we take over mass. Okay. Uh, Mission airline system. Okay. So at the end, uh, uh, is it both? Are both company still in present? Wujud lagi tak? Kazana dengan mass? Wujud tak company tu? Ada lagi tak Kazana? Ada. Ada, ada, ada. ada. So maknanya dia tak false under amalgamation. Kalau amalgamation, kazanah dengan mas tak ada dah. Not in present. Okay, absorption. Kalau absorption, kazanah absorb mas. Mas dah lama dah tak ada. Tapi mas still lagi ada. Okay, so take over. So take over means dia hanyalah involved with the acquisition of control. Okay, dia acquired control sahaja. Okay, B acquired control in A acquired certain control in B. Okay, uh, so when we are talking about element of control, we are referring to distance combination which falls under takeover or sometimes we call it acquisition. Okay. Kenapa? What's the reasons for the business combination? Why A would like to amalgamate with B? Why A would like to absorb B? Why A want to acquire control in B? Okay. The main reason actually to enjoy economy of scale. Okay. Economy of scale. Okay. I believe that you have discussed this one. Okay, in detail when you're talking about topic merger under corporate finance. Remember, what's the reason, the main reason for the merger? For the synergy. Betul, class? Betul? Yes. Uh, so, where does synergy come from? From economy of scale. Okay, so, why is economy of scale? By sharing resources. Cutting down the cost. Cutting out the competitors. Okay, maybe B is the main competitors to A. So, might swear A absorb B. Or A control B. Okay, uh, by having this combination, okay, both company can use resources more yeah, efficient. Alright, that's uh, among the reasons for the business combination. Okay, let me go back to our slide. Okay. Okay, so we go back to our example just now. Okay, we have A 
which I call it acquirer, we acquire. Okay, from the perspective of finance, acquirer, we call it investors. From the perspective of finance, the acquiry, we call it investee. So business combination with regards to the takeover, okay, kita tak, we are not going to discuss about amalgamation, about the absorption, because it ada the element of control. It terus jadi pemangsa, dan terus bubar. Okay, kita nak macam tu. Kita nak talking about the element of control. Okay, uh, so we are focusing on element of control. So, A acquire equity shares, okay, or kita berkata juga uh, exchange the issue share. Okay, so the acquisition of control can be taken place by acquiring the respective voting shares, which is ordinary share capital, or by exchanging their, car, their issue share. Okay, tukar, suka sama suka. Contoh, A offer their own shares, three shares, for every five shares that being acquired from B. Okay, uh, so saya kena highlight this one because dalam soalan nanti, dia tak ada lah yang kata sentiasa direct which A acquired ordinary shares in B. But sometimes they also might have exchanging the shares. So you can tahu lah ratio dia 3 per 5. Okay, 3 over 3 shares for every 5 shares. So ratio dia lah 3 over 3 over 5. Okay. So we're talking about acquiring the control ni sama concept dengan investment. Okay. Uh, so concept dia sama dengan investment. Okay. Uh, sama je. Cuma A invest in B by acquiring control. Okay. Uh, so instead of the investment, it will come together with the percentage of control. Okay, so the element of control has been discussed under MFRS 3 where it stated that one entity acquires control of one or more business or entity. So, let's say we go back to our example A and B just now. So, A may acquire control in B and at the same point of time, at the masa yang sama, A also may acquire control in another company. Bukan satu saja. So A as the acquirer, they may have control in B, they may have control in C, they may have control in D. Boleh. Okay, tak ada masalah. Uh, mana satu entity have many controls. Tak ada masalah. Okay. So, is as I mentioned just now. Okay. Kita kena keluar balik. Ni specifically saya kena discuss A dan B saja. Okay, contoh eh. A dan B. Tapi dua entity saja A and B. Okay. A acquired ordinary shares. Or share capital in B. Okay. So meaning say that A made some investment. Okay. Uh, so ni adalah investment. A in B. Okay. So, bila A acquire control ataupun acquire ordinary share capital, kita akan record dia sebagai investment. Okay. So, general entry dia adalah ha, bila ada elemen A acquire ordinary share capital in B. So, the general entry will be debit investment 
in share credit ataupun itu pun investment saja ataupun investment in share ataupun kita investment in B okey credit card okey so bila A acquire mana A beli share in B so A must provide certain payment purchase price how much A should pay to B Uh, that's why you refer to the slide, okay, the acquirer transfer consideration. Transfer consideration actually is the purchase price. Okay, so that purchase price dalam for kita panggil dia consideration transfer. Berapa purchase price that will be transferred from A to B? So, kita akan guna short form nanti throughout the discussion CT. Bukannya CT No Diana, CT No Haliza, bukan. Just CT saja. Alright. So, CT stand for consideration transfer. So, this consider consideration transfer can comprises of Okay, macam mana dia bayar? Sama nak bentuk cash. Okay. You can refer to the slide, okay. Transfer asset. Asset tu dalam bentuk cash. Ataupun liability by issuing debentures or by issuing equity. Boleh? Uh, tak ada masalah. Uh, issuing shares. Contohnya, ordinary share, preference share. Boleh, tak ada masalah. So, kena tengok soalan nanti. Yang ni, jenis ni penting. Sebab saya, sebab that's, that's why saya highlight kat sini. So, when we have acquisition of equity, A over B, the general entry must be debit investment in share ataupun in B, credit card cash or credit card debentures or credit card share. It depends on the question. Okay. So, where this transaction goes into the statement? Okay, investment in share akan pergi ke dalam SOPI. Statement of financial position under non-current asset. Akan ada perkataan nanti investment in B. Alright. Yang ni akan pergi ke SOPI. Itu juga this one akan pergi ke SOPI. Anda, it depends lah. Okay, kalau cash pergi anda current asset. This also goes to SOPI. Debentures anda non current liabilities. Share, it depends whether ordinary share capital or preference share capital. Okay, with regards to the preference share capital, so please, there are three difference yang selalu yang keluar ya, is redeemable preference share capital, non-redeemable preference share capital or cumulative. Apa beza dia kelas? What is redeemable? Preference share capital? What is the substance dia? Dia liability ke equity? Hmm. Redeemable. Liability. Ah, redeemable. Nama redeem. Dia boleh redeem. It's a liability. Okay. Non-redeemable is the equity. Cumulative also equity. So, kalau redeemable, okay, it should be disclosed under non-current liability. But for non-redeemable or cumulative, should be under equity together with the ordinary share capital. Alright? Uh, so, itu juga dan bila deal dengan share, kita akan deal dengan dividend. Dividend come from non-redeemable preference share capital and cumulative 
we, we appear dalam statement of changes in equity. But dividend for the redeemable masuk dalam super. Okay, sebab dia dah liability. Okay, jadi expenses. Dividendnya jadi expenses. Okay. Kena faham dia punya konsep. Okay. So semua ni ada dividend. Dividend declare out of redeemable preferential capital. That dividend shouldn't be disclosed under statement of changes in equity. Dividend dia mesti dalam super. Okay. Sebab dia adalah liability. Whatever cost arising from that should be expenses. Okay. Boleh? Okay. Uh, so, let's say lah. Kalau lah kat sini, saya letak lah satu figure. A, transfer to B for the acquisition of control tadi. Nilai dia adalah RM10,000. Contoh, RM10,000. So, dalam super, dalam sopi nanti nilai ni mesti sama. Kenapa saya halak ni kelas? Sebab sometimes soalan tak bagi pun introduction yang beritahu A acquire B. Macam tu saja. How much A paid to B? Silent. Where to know the information? Where to get the information? Tengok Sopi. Berapa dia bayar? Boleh kelas? Okay. Okay. Jangan kata soalan salah. <coughs> okay. Next. Sekejap, sekejap. Okay. Ada masa lagi. Alright. So, remember kita fokus on takeover. Maksudnya kita looking at the acquisition of control. Okay. Control apa? Control maknanya we have ability to make a decision with regards to the financial and also operating policy of the other entity which is B. So A at the kuasa. There is a power to interfere. Okay. To make decision with regards to Financial decision as well as operating decision. Okay. Related to B. Ha. Semua nak kuasa ni. Ha. So, talking about mesti ada control. So, soalan sekarang ni ialah How to determine whether control is present? Macam mana nak tahu control tu wujud ke tak wujud bila A acquired B. Alright. Acquired voting rights of B. Or the reshare. Ada tak control? Nah, so, salah satu caranya ialah by looking at the acquisition itself, okay, which stated under MFRS 3, dia kata A, investor, eh, A holds more than 50%. Syarat dia, A mesti acquired voting rights, which is ordinary share capital. More than 50%. Kalau 50% tak aci. Dia mesti 50 ke atas. Okay. More than 50%. Okay. So voting rights is ordinary share capital. So ada syarat lagi. Voting rights ni are only considered if. Uh, bukan sebarangan ordinary share saja. So maknanya by acquiring that 50% of the ordinary share capital Dia kata if the rights are substantive Apa maksud dia the rights are substantive A memang ada kuasa okay? Dia dah acquire 50% of ordinary share capital Maknanya A ada voting rights Dia ada voting vote rights Maknanya rights eh uh, Rights to vote But if A did not exercise ataupun dia tak practically use the ability okay, to exercise the rights, so tak akan ada control. Tak guna ada 50% of the voting rights 
but they don't have the ability to exercise the votes tadi, the rights. Ha, sebab tu kata substantive. Maknanya A must has the ability to exercise the rights. Maknanya dia mesti ada ability to make a decision with regards to the financial and the operating policy of B. Okay, next dia kata lagi. Control is also present when investor has power over investee. Ah, dia kata ada power. Okay, so bukan setakat ada power. Power tu mesti, ah, dia kata ability to use the power. Same macam yang tadi, ada voting rights. But is it that voting right is ability to be exercised? Ha, so sama juga. No points. Tak ada more than 50% voting rights but you don't have the ability to exercise that voting rights. So useless. So sama. Same goes to the power. So investor has power over investing. But the issue is that whether investor has the ability to use the power. Maknanya ada power and must have the ability to use the power. Okay. So, soalan timbul daripada sini. Macam mana nak determine whether power is present or not? Okay, so I just put here. Please refer to the textbook. Okay. Volume 9. Volume 8 pun boleh. Volume 8 warna biru eh. Uh, biru turquoise macam warna dia. Biru. Volume 9 warna orange ye eh? macam orange sikit kan alright so yang ni saya bagi the latest eh ikut latest uh, edition edition 9 refer to page 307 kalau yang edition 8 lebih kurang lah uh, page 306 308 macam tu lah lebih kurang sama okey topik yang sama okey so refer to 307 paragraph 2 okey Uh, so paragraph 2 dia ada mention kat situ uh, Apakah uh, consideration okay, What are the elements that we need to consider uh, In determining whether power is present or not Okay uh, So saya tak diskarang kat sini Alright because it's a theory Okay next dia kata kat sini When another element that we need to consider juga ataupun uh, how to determine whether control is present okay, by looking at whether investor has rights to determine the directions of the rele relevant activities of the other, of another entities. Okay, ini adalah um, apa ni um, uh, supporting evidence okay if You want to determine the control by looking at the percentage of control there must be more than 50%, must have power, power must be ability to be used and then investor has right to determine the direction of the relevant activities. Okay, next. Okay, investor may hold a majority of the voting rights. Maknanya voting rights are more than 50% but No power. Boleh? Okay. Bukan saja because of kenapa no power? Sebab dia punya voting right is not substantive. But it could be other reason. Okay. No power is present. Or you might uh, apa ni? Uh, acquire less than 50% number, number two. But control is also present. Tapi dia punya acquisition of control dia less than majority dan less than 50%. Ha, terbalik. Okay, the first one dia kata they have more than 50% of the voting rights in B tapi no power. Second one dia kata they own less than 50%. Let's say lah kita tak percentage 40% sahaja. Tapi dia ada control. Ha, macam mana tu? Okay. Uh, so, dekat sini, okay, so dia adalah dia punya situation dia. So, you can refer to page 309. Okay, page 309. Nanti you just snap saja page tersebut. At least nota for you, for you to reference in the future. Okay, 
So untuk yang clause number one tadi ni, yang syarat nombor satu dia kata dia hold more than 50% of the voting rights of an investees means B, A acquired more than 50% voting rights of B tapi no power. Contohnya GLC. Okay, GLC. Okay, the shareholders own more than 50% Tapi tak ada power. Kenapa tak ada power? Because the power is being controlled by the government. Government linked companies, GLCs. Okay. Number two, the percentage is less than 50%. I put figure just now is 40%. Okay. But control is present. Control ada. Percentage is less than 50%. Okay. So in what situation? Selalunya number one, ada contractual agreement. Ha, dalam contract kata, even though the percentage is less than 50%, but A has the ability to control B. Ha, so, contract akan override MFRS 3. Okay. Ha, so, dalam contract, it be clearly stated. Okay, even though the, the percentage is less than 50%, but the control is still present. Okay, lain daripada tu, investor ni, dia ada, contohnya A, dia ada, dia own potential voting rights. Okay, remember last semester you all belajar file 570? Ingat kelas? Ingat lagi ke? Ke kod apa tu 570 tu? Kod alien ke? Ingat. Ha, ingat kan? Ingat lagi tak topik yang pertama? Topik apa kelas? The first topic. The third topic lah. First topic tu relate to your group project. Segmental reporting and interim reporting. What be the next topic after that? EPS. Yes, EPS. Remember lagi? Diluted earning per share. Remember share option. Remember, share option. What is share option class? Huh? What is share options? Hmm. What is share options? Apa elemen yang you deal dalam DEPS? Company may own apa dia? Some instrument that may be converted into ordinary share capital in the future. Betul kelas? Betul? Oh. Uh, mana you ada, you pegang instrument which is convertible debt which are able to be converted into ordinary share capital. So sama juga dalam case ni, dia kata originally dia punya percentage of control is 40% which is less than half but A also own potential voting rights. Maknanya pada masa sama A ada pegang instrumen yang mana in the future can be converted into ordinary share capital. Okay. So dia boleh up lagi dia punya percentage of control. Okay. So that's are some of the example lah of the situation. So please go through page 309. Okay? Boleh? Okay, this is example. Okay? Ah, boleh. All right. Let's look at example 1. Uh, in red color is the answer. Okay. So A Berhad acquired 40 million ordinary shares of B. A acquired 40 million ordinary shares which is voting rights of B. Berapa persen class? The issued share capital of B was 50 million ordinary shares. Berapa persen class? Nak kira percentage of control. Okay saya tunjuklah formula dulu. Macam mana kira percentage of control? Okay, percentage of control. 
Okay. Number of shares acquired divided by number of shares owned by acquired by a shares owned by b times 100 okay kita ganti dalam formula berapa shares acquired by a over b berapa 40 million berapa number of shares owned by b 50 million 50 million berapa sen class 80% 80% is more than half more than 50% betul uh, so more than 50% maknanya kita ada element of control a control b okey betul betul kelas uh, sebab tu jawapan jawapan dia kata power arises when holding the majority of voting rights Okay, so ada power. Kenapa ada power? Sebab ada control. Okay, next. The next one, A berhad, uh, A acquired 40 million ordinary shares of B. The issued share capital of B was 50 million. However, uh, ada pula tambahan paragraf baru. A has not exercised its right and actively directing the relevant activities of the university. Who is the university class? Who is the university? B. B. Uh, A, they acquired more, they acquired 80% in B. Acquired uh, ordinary share in B. Tapi A has not exercised. So, jawapan dia kata hold a majority but no power. Kenapa no power? Sebab dia tak, dia punya voting rights are not substantive. Okay, sebab dia tak exercise pun dia punya voting rights. Boleh? Boleh faham? Okay. Okay, example two. A acquired 20 million of B. The issued share of B was 50 million. Please calculate what be the percentage of control? 40%. Okay, 20 divided by 50 times 100. So we get 40%. Kurang daripada 50%. Betul? Yes. Uh, so, kalau less than, than 50% maknanya no control. Ingat tu, control hanya wujud apabila more than 50%. MFRS, MFRS 3. Okay. So, kita terus nampak. Okay, 40% maknanya no control. Absolute size alone, because yang ni is just explanation ya. Yeah? So, maknanya kita tak ada another supporting statement to, to guide us to make further decision whether control is present or not. So kita just based on the percentage of control. 40%. Less than 50% means no control. So that's why I put here absolute size alone which is 40% to is sufficient to determine whether A has power over B. Sebab tak ada lagi dah statement yang lain nak menyokong. But let's look at the other side. Same question, A acquired 20 million ordinary shares of B. The issued share of B was 50 million. Kita ada satu lagi additional statement. A was able to appoint five boards of directors of B during annual general meeting. Okay, so 40%. Which is less than 50%. No control is present. 
However, it was able to appoint. Dia ada kuasa nak melantik lima board of directors of B. Maksudnya dia ada, dia ada, dia ada power. So ada tak element of control kat sini kelas? Ada. Okay. Bila ada control, akan ada power. So power, so the, the answer is there is a power without a majority of the voting rights. Still have the power, still have the element to control even though the acquisition of control is only 40% because A has decision making rights. Okay, sebab dia boleh appoint. Alright, so macam inilah soalan untuk 1B where you have to apply. Okay, knowledge yang you all ada. Okay, next. We go to the next one. What is NCI? Short form dia NCI. Okay, nama penuh dia adalah non-controlling interest. Apa maksudnya non-controlling interest? <coughs> okay, so remember tadi kelas, okay, kita kata A acquired yang you all kira tadi. Hmm, yang ni. Contohnya, you all kira dia 40 divided by 50 times 100. Dan you dapat kat sini 80%. Okay, 80%. So, siapa yang control 80%? A. Yeah. So, balance dia 20, another 20% adalah kepunyaan non-controlling interest. Okay, so who is NCI? NCI is a group of shareholders, okay, group of shareholders <coughs> who do not control. That's why I get a non-controlling interest. Dia tak ada element of control. But we still need to identify what will be the percentage of NCI. Okay, uh, so kena ingat lah. Kalau 60, Mana saya pun kesel. Oh Allah. Okay. Kalau 60. Okay. NCI will be 40%. Kalau 80, 20%. Uh, so kalau 100%, NCI dia tiada. Okay. Boleh? 100%. Okay. Kalau 90%, will be 10%. Okay. Ini hanya untuk ordinary share capital controlling interest. Nanti kita akan discuss what be the percentage of NCI untuk preference share capital and the benches will be different. Okay. Ha, ini untuk kita cover hari ini ordinary share capital sahaja. Okay, uh, so you all boleh baca. Okay, kat sini pun dah explain. Okay, A had acquired 70%. Therefore, the 30% which not held by A are called NCI. So, NCI ni adalah equity. Okay, uh, so bila equity, nak keluar masuk, keluar masuk macam ni je ha. Okay, bila equity, Sopi, equity, tadi saya dah tunjuk dah kat you all kat mana nak tunjuk dan apa ni investment in B, part of dan current asset. Okay so equity kita ada uh, share capital. Okay kita akan ada retain profit. Kita akan ada reserve. Okay, ada reserve. And then, jangan lupa last kali, kita ada kat sini, NCI. Boleh guna ya, short form, NCI. Okay, 
So NCR will be part of SOP under equity. Okay, this is measurement of NCI. Ada dua eh, measurement. Macam mana kita nak measure NCI? Okay, sama ada saya dah letak dah keyword kat sini. Yang pertama in red color ni. Sama ada dia measure at the proportionate shares ataupun measure at fair value. When you come across the words proportionate shares, share, Meaning that this NCI is measured by using partial goodwill. Apa maksudnya partial goodwill? Maksudnya ialah this NCI is limited to the parents' share of goodwill. Okay. NCI which measured at fair value is called measured by using full goodwill. Okay. So maksudnya parents share and goodwill of goodwill and NCI shares. Okay, kenapa parents kat sini? Nanti saya explain. Okay. What is the parent kat situ? Alright. So yang ni kita saya rasa tak sempat hari ni. Kita akan continue untuk determination of goodwill and bargain purchase. Okay. Yang inilah step number one. Okay. So before we end the session. Okay. So nak tunjuk satu lagi Okay for the last one Okay A Acquired B tadi Alright More than Acquired ordinary share capital More than 50% Okay So A Kita panggil dia acquirer B Is a acquiry Okay if A acquired ordinary share capital more than 50%, example 60%, 70%, 80%, 75%, whatever lah, as long as more than 50%, A become a parent. The other company and the acquired control that they become subsidiary. Alright, so parents, kita akan guna short form dia, holding company. Okay, saya guna perkataan HACI, holding company. Sebab nanti kita ada masa ya, nak kena, kita nak beat the time untuk final assessment. So, kena guna banyak abbreviation. So, HACI is the acquirer, acquiry is subsidiary. So, hopefully that you will know when is the time a become HC when is the time B become an S. Okay, subsidiary. So this is the condition here. Ordinary share capital should be more than 50%. Okay, so what if kalau dia punya ordinary share capital is less than 50%? Less than 50%? Okay. Maknanya B become associate. Okay. Uh, so less than 50%. Maksudnya 40%. So dia ada syarat kat sini. Dia mesti contohnya saya buat kat sini. X more or equal 20%. 50%. Associate. Okay, kalau A acquire ordinary share capital 20% ataupun less than 50%, minimumnya 20% ya. So, we be associate. B bukannya subsidiary. B akan jadi associate. Short form dia lah A. Okay, kalau less than, acquisition dia less than 20%. What be status of B? Simple investment. Macam investment biasa. Simple investment. Okay. So, ada tiga kat sini. Subsidiary, associate and simple investment. So, we come across these three terms dalam textbook. Tapi kita tak cover lah simple investment ni sebab simple sangat kan. Kita tak main lah simple-simple. Okay. Alright. So, I think 
we stop here. So next class, we'll continue with the determination of goodwill uh, by game purchase.